meeting in public session. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. okay. Just just before we commence, uh, the usual warning are about mobile phones. If you have mobile phones, could you either switch them off or turn them to flight mode? Uh, it interferes not alone with the meeting but the recording and broadcast of the proceedings. And secondly, the issue of privilege. I wish to draw your attention to the fact that by virtue of Section 17.2.1 of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of their evidence to this committee. However, if you're directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to so do, you're entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You're directed only that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given, and you're asked to respect parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, persons or entity by name, or in such a way as to make him, her or it identifiable. Uh, your opening statements to the committee will be published on the committee uh, website after the meeting. And members are reminded of the long-standing practice to the effect that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside the House or an official, either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. So at this stage, I'm pleased to welcome the Banking and Payments Federation, uh, represented this afternoon by Mr. Noel Brett, Mr. Morris Crowley and Mr. Felix O'Regan. You're very welcome and thank you for your attendance here this afternoon. Um, you have submitted documentation, but uh, you might like to make an opening statement, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman and committee members. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to appear before you um, this afternoon uh, to discuss the issue of housing and homelessness with a particular emphasis on how obstacles that are currently um, impeding progress on the issue might be surmounted and the specific actions that uh, might, be ne might be needed uh, to address the problem. Very briefly, the Banking and Payments Federation in Ireland is a membership organisation. We represent banks uh, active in the domestic retail market. We represent international bank banks active in the international banking sector and also payments, uh, those involved in the payment sector. I suppose at a very high level, um, you know, it would be very much of the view that the housing market cannot and should not be viewed as one single homogenous sector. Um, I very much believe uh, that it's an, it's an amalgam of subsectors, including social housing, affordable housing, rented accommodation, and indeed owner-occupied or mortgaged property. I guess a view uh, at a high level of the, of the housing sector and the homeless issues arising are further complicated by the fact that there are regional variations uh, and challenges, and I firmly believe that there's no one generic solution. The challenge for public policy is to, ensure that the correct, is to ensure the correct alignment between the needs of individuals and their families and the supply of the various housing types I've referred to. Success in meeting this public policy challenge, in my, in my view, believe, requires a coordinated strategic response with full participation by every one of the stakeholders and every one of the relevant state agencies and government departments. And I strongly believe that it needs oversight at a government and a rock this level uh, so that it, it's driven on and, and delivered out. Um, so I, I, I guess on behalf of the banking industry, I want to start really by restating our commitment to engage fully uh, with this committee and with the actions uh, that you will recommend at the end of your deliberations. Um, we want to ensure that our sector is, is uh, fully engaged and that it, cre it helps to work uh, creatively also to deliver the elements of the national response that are within my member's competence and my member's remit. Very conscious that no one sector on its own uh, can address this issue. So I believe every one of us have elements of a strategy that we can, we can work on and address on. I guess any financing provided by the banking sector to address uh, supply and demand issues in each of the subsectors I've mentioned, uh, social housing, affordable housing, rented and owner-occupied, must really must comply in full with the regulatory requirements of the Irish Central Bank, um, and it must be viable for all the parties, um, all of the parties involved. It's essential that the public policy response to this crisis quickly delivers and has some early wins in all of the sectors, in all of the subsectors that I've mentioned. Um, and it has to have the right categories of housing stock in the correct locations, uh, you know, and that the policy is sustainable over the longer term. I think we need to be very, very careful that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past and that we learn where there is learning um, uh, in, in our rush to, I guess, to collectively address the immediate pressure on homelessness, uh, that whatever solutions are, are, are arrived at and whatever sec part my sector can play in, uh, that we, we very much uh, learn from the past. I should also say that the wider banking sector is interested in discussing what, what role, if any, and how it might play a role in supporting and financing 
uh, housing capacity uh, and supply building, um, building of housing supply and capacity in each of the subsectors. Um, and, and again, any involvement that your committee might feel my sector can have an involvement in, I'm very happy to take that back and explore that in detail with the broader banking sector in Ireland. Um, again, on the basis that uh, you know, it'll be individual member banks that will have to determine their involvement. And again, of course, it must be viable and sustainable over the lifetime of any financing facilities provided for all parties to those agreements. I suppose, thankfully, uh, you know, where we heard some time ago, we might be talking in, in different language in terms of supply of mortgage supply and the availability of mortgage supply. Thankfully, things have improved significantly, and our members are fully committed to providing mortgage finance to those who are requiring uh, housing in that, in that segment or that subsector and do have the capacity to borrow and repay, repay. But banks must do so on a prudent basis in a competitive market. I've, on my submission, which I'm not going to read through in detail, I've provided you with some detail in terms of mortgage drawdowns from 2000, Q1 2014 right through uh, to data, which we will be publishing after this committee in terms of uh, quarter one 2016. I guess at a very high level, uh, we can see uh, that, you know, uh, uh, for example, we can see 4.9 billion in total were, was drawn down in 2015. That was a 26% increase in mortgage, in, in mortgage drawdown over 2014. And that, that equates to 27,324 new mortgages. And I'm very conscious that addresses just one subsector of housing uh, and housing, housing uh, demand that we talked about. Um, we've shown you in the graphs there, uh, graph one and page. Uh, uh, our graph two in particular in terms of the role of the first time buyer and just it's interesting to note it's now the single largest category uh, drawing down close of half of all the mortgages in 2015. I have a graph there on a, a top of the third page just showing you uh, the drawdown volumes by first time buyer, by mover purchaser, by the rental investment or the buy to let sector, the remortgaging stroke switching and top up mortgages. Um, and again, I'm very pleased that I'm in a position to provide you today with unpublished figures for the first quarter of 2016. And they really show us that 5,446 mortgages were drawn down in the first quarter of 20, uh, 2016, equating to a value of one billion. Uh, this, appears, this might appear to be a, a slight downturn on the equivalent quarter 2015, but I think all of the commentators uh, you know, will agree that there were specific factors that caused uh, 20, Q1 2015 to be uh, higher than you might expect. I suppose also um, it's interesting to see uh, in, in the figures uh, the value of uh, remortgaging or switching continuing to increase, but I, I should point out from very, very low levels. We're one of the countries in Europe that does now have a mortgage switching code. And I know when I talk to my colleagues at the European Banking Federation, many of them don't have those kind of formal arrangements. So there is now in place a formal switching code. And we can see that uh, 392 remortgages took place between January and March of this year with a value of 78 million. Um, and clearly you can see that's a 127, 128% increase on, on the same period last year. I should mention that all of that lending is now taking place within the context of the central bank's macroprudential rules on mortgage and housing markets. And we as a sector and my members fully recognize the importance of reinsuring the stability of the banking system and of protecting households from the risk of over indebtedness. And we do support the central bank on the need to ensure that a, cre a credit driven bubble does not take hold again in Ireland. Uh, we note and acknowledge the intention of the central bank to maintain these rules. However, we welcome the governor's announcement that written submissions will be invited and considered with regard to the calibration and application of his rules, of the central bank rules. And clearly, we as a sector will consult with our members, and as we did last time round, we will uh, make a written submission to the governor um, for his consideration. I suppose I should just draw attention to our view that the most significant impact of the central bank rules is for first-time buyers is the requirement to save significant funds in advance of being considered for a mortgage. Um, the most, this is most acutely, fact, if most acutely felt in the Dublin, in the Dublin region. Uh, the rules at the moment uh, have an average price for a first-time buyer house of 280,000. In that context, you'd have to have a deposit of 35,000 or 12.5 percent of the purchase price of the house. Sorry, 35,000 or 12.5 percent of the purchase price. And if you just imagine uh, what that burden means for a couple or for a person who's renting and paying everly increasing rents, uh, it, becomes, it becomes a very, a very difficult uh, and an insurmountable burden for many to raise that deposit um, 
when you're currently renting, particularly, as I say, in the Dublin area, and most notably over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. It's important, however, to point out that any recalibration of the central bank rules on its own or in itself will not address the house, the, the problem, all of the problems facing the housing market and the bigger issue, the most immediate crisis of homelessness. The most fundamental problem, in my view, is a shortage of suitable, of suitable supply in the key locations where demand for that sector of housing is greatest. Um, there are a myriad of factors uh, put forward by commentators uh, which are perhaps beyond the remit and competence of banks, but it's worth just pointing out some of the ones that uh, commentators are, are highlighting. For example, building costs, planning process and planning regulation, land use and availability of land, and the capacity of developers to raise equity. Banks are, of course, important providers of development finance to viable construction projects, but they are not and they cannot be the providers of 100% finance, and the builder will need uh, to bring a significant element of equity to the project. And that's a challenge, uh, in our view, uh, for many, uh, many builders and developers right now. The general consensus amongst the wider housing market stakeholders is that, is that there is a medium to long-term requirement to build 25,000 housing units per annum nationally, and perhaps around 7,000 units per annum in Dublin. Now we note that there were 8,100 8, new commencements in 2015, which was a 5% increase nationwide over 2014. But if you look carefully at the data, you'll see that 40% of those commencements were one-off houses, and, not, not, and, and, uh, you know, and only 38% are in the boundaries of the Dublin local authority areas, where the, the pressure in all of the sectors I've mentioned uh, is most acute. So I suppose the ongoing, short, the ongoing uh, shortfall in housing supply across the four subsectors is likely to further reduce the availability of housing units, both for buyers, renters and renters, with increased pressure, I imagine, I, I foresee on rent levels, particularly in the Greater Dublin area. So finally, I wish to outline how BPFI and our member banks are working with borrowers who are struggling with mortgage and other debts. Um, we believe, as an industry, that customer engagement with lenders is paramount and this is borne out by the continuing downward trend in the level of loan arrears. We consistently re recommend four actions uh, for borrowers in distress, and they are contact your lender as soon as possible, look at your financial situation with the help of, of a standard financial statement, and always respond to communication from your lender, but most particularly of all, avail of the expert advice and the assistance from the broad range of state agencies, voluntary sector and professionals which are now available uh, free of charge um, in, in, the, in many cases free of charge uh, in the sector. This is indeed a, you know, and I would acknowledge an extremely daunting situation for any individual or any family and it is imperative that people do engage and it is imperative that they have good quality independent advice in doing so. And there is a lot of help out there. I've added in, uh, just for information of deputies, many of you, I know from dealing with you over the, over the last number of years, are very aware of the, the various schemes that are in place, um, but I've, I've, just, I've added them in, in, the, uh, in the pack um, by way of illustration. It's important that you know, we're, we're, we as a sector and on behalf of our members and our individual member banks also work with trusted third parties uh, to create a broad range of options for uh, customers in distress uh, to draw on depending on their circumstances. Many of these cases are unique, they're very, very different and people will require a different level of e external um, uh, support. I draw your attention particularly to the money advice and budgeting service. We find this to be a, a very professional service and one which we have had a long history of engagement with. I've included in your pack, your briefing pack, um, you know, the, uh, the, the framework agreement for late stage mortgage arrears which is currently being finalised um, and, and sorry, the, also the, the protocol which is in place and is operating very, very well. Um, that deals with unsecured debt as well as mortgage debt. So, you know, we need to think in terms of debt, it's also it's, it's unsecured debt, it's personal loans, overdrafts, credit cards and so on, in addition to the secured debt. We work very closely also with the Insolvency Service of Ireland to help over-indebted customers get back on track through a range of options, the debt relief notices, the debt settlements arrangements, the per person insolvency arrangements, and you know, following the changes in, from this Oireachtas uh, 12 months ago um, in terms of the bankruptcy, the new bankruptcy regime. The mortgage to rent scheme.